I was eight years in prison. My first imprisonment was at the age of 14 years old. My name is Keith Alfonso Michael. I am the CEO of Libone Life for Printers and a range of other companies. Um, my background, I come from Westbury, a then previous, previously disadvantaged community. I ended up um, completing an uh, MBA and uh, yes, I've grown my business substantially and I've diversified our, our brand. So yes, that's my background. I'm now 50. And yes, let's see where we go from here. So as I said, I've grown up in Westbury. Uh, I had a political path I took. Uh, my first imprisonment was at the age of 14 years old. Uh, back as a political prisoner, we had a state of emergency and we engaged in a lot of boycotts, uh, strikes and so forth. So I grew up in Westbury um, and part of my my learning as a political activist was to make sure that we are ready for the country that we envisaged. Education was always primary to our folks, but unfortunately I left Standard 9 or completed Standard 9. I then went into activism. From there I got arrested. I completed my, my first, uh, well, I completed my matric in, in prison. I did my first degree in prison. I came out of prison and I went and I worked for the ANC at uh, the Inshallahs. Worked for them for a while after our elections. I then went into business and I did an MBA. So education is critical uh, if you're engaging in business, but not only in business. I think you'll, you'll realize that education is pivotal for any success path. My background, very clear, very simple. I think with everything else in life, Whatever you want to do or whatever you want to achieve, you have to focus education, education, and again education. I was eight years in prison. I did my degree in, in prison, but I was eight years in prison. I was involved in a lot of political activities back in the day with the United Democratic Front. Well, I think there's a difference between being a habitual criminal or a, 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 a today what we call criminals or a political activist. Uh, in my case, we were political prisoners. Um, I think I sometimes wear that with pride, knowing that in my own way I've made a change to the democracy that we in and that we enjoy today. So I use that to my advantage. So how I got onto the idea, I worked for a boss, I got tired as I came out of prison. I first got uh, my first job, real job, was with a plastics company as a salesperson. Um, I think my forte is sales, marketing, that's my forte. So I then got annoyed with my boss, took my bags and I walked out, not knowing what I was going to do. But because I believe in God and I believe that God will guide me, I then decided to do what we call today print brokering. I bought a fax machine, it cost me 800 rand and I worked from home. And every bit of money I've made, I've put back into productive assets. I first bought a small machine and I grew from there, bought additional machinery and I used to deliver the goods myself. I used to have a little beetle that I went to, to do deliveries with. So the path that I walked is not an easy path. If you're in business, don't for one minute think that it's an easy path. Yes, as you become more successful, things will get better and it seems like it's easy. But when you get into business, your first three to five years will be an enormous journey. But be prepared because the fruits of your labor is very sweet. My advice, if you're getting into business, focus, make sure that you understand your market, make sure that you always treat your clients as if you or she is your last client and your only client. Oh, did I experience failure. So failure is inevitable. Failure is inevitable. Failure should be a stepping stone to success. You need to take 
the, the lessons learned out of your failures and implement it. Do a SWOT analysis on yourself. Analyze your strengths, your weakness, what opportunities and the threats. I remember sitting one day on my knees praying and saying to the Lord, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, then you can't let me fail. Because if you want me to be a steward of your kingdom, give me the success I need in order to build your kingdom. So failure is inevitable. And I'm saying this with all humility in me. You need to understand that for you to succeed, you're not going to do it on the first time. You're not going to do it the second time. You might even fail five times before you succeed. I've had several businesses. Some of them grossly failed. Why? Funding is a barrier. One is funding. So if you look at funding, what did I do to, to, to achieve and to, to gain access to money? Banks at the time didn't want to talk to me. I had no assets. I had a house that was bonded. I then sold the house, took the capital from those houses, or from my house, it was about 80,000 rand that I made clean. I took that money into a productive asset, bought a better machine, and we started growing that. I went on risk, everything in life is risk, but also calculate your risk. Don't be reckless when you're taking risks. But some of us at the time, I had nothing else to lose rather than to gain. So I took every, every, Sent I made and I plowed it back into business. But yes, funding will be a challenge. Make sure that you've got a good structure behind you. Make sure that you've got a good support system behind you. Whether it be your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters, your wife, your girlfriend. Make sure that whoever you've got behind you, you do have a good support structure. So, because I believe I'm, I'm a true child of God, um, I always place my fear in the Lord. I, I always place everything I do with God. I wake up in the morning in prayer. I drive in prayer. I get to my office. On my desk is a Bible. I open that Bible and I cast my fears unto the Lord because it's clear. Cast your fears unto the Lord. Some of you might not be religious. Some of you might not believe. But trust me, if you do believe there is a God, that all your fear you can cast upon him. And when it gets into business, I knew that I had to surround myself with strong people. As my businesses grew, I had to surround myself with good accountants, good bookkeepers, good uh, sales and directors, and I surrounded myself with them. Yes, you pay them well, they'll, 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 they'll put in their pound of flesh. So surround yourself with good people, surround yourself with good support structures. Make sure you read, read, read. Understand what the market is doing. Understand your competitors. You become a leader, not a follower. And that your competitors are aware that wherever you go, they'll have to keep following. Stay ahead of your competition. Make sure that you're at least two, three strides ahead of them. It's difficult for competitors to keep up to you. But if you become a follower, you become a slave to others' ideas. Always be innovative. I think earlier before we switched on the camera, you spoke about someone that you encountered that wants to sleep late and that wants to, to get home early. Don't get into business. If that's what you have in your mind, the misconception is that people might see you driving a fancy car, live in a fancy house, and just make the assumption that you've landed this purely because you've been either gifted or you've been blessed with a, a good fund, a slush fund. Unfortunately, being an entrepreneur, I wake up every morning I'm at work, 6 o'clock. Most evenings I only get home past 7. If you want to be successful, you have to put time in. That's nothing's going to land on your lap. Nobody owes you anything. The world owes you nothing. But it's all out there for you to go get it. So yes, misconceptions, you can sleep late. No, no, no. Any entrepreneur that is worth his or her salt will tell you exactly what I'm saying. You will have to get up and work. You'll have to put more time in. There was times like Christmas Day, Boxing Day. I used to work. I used to be here, you know. So that, it comes with a turf. I think that the, the biggest sacrifice I made was to always know that whatever money I've made, whether it was a million rand that I had laying around in the bank account, knowing that I can go out and go buy a car, or go out and buy clothes, or go out and buy jewelry. 
know that cash is king. Sometimes you might have the money and you might feel that I need to support myself. But know that the minute you touch on your cash, it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit of spending. Spend your money wisely. Use it on productive assets. A car is not an asset. A house is an asset. Jewelry is not an asset. Productive assets. Invest instead of um, buying flashy things. If you do have it one day, yes, do it. But while you emerge, while you're on that journey, make the sacrifices now so that by the age of 50, um, I think between the age of 20 and 50, a wink of an eye, literally a wink of an eye, you'll be 50. Don't wake up at the age of 50 and say, I don't have a million rand for my pension or 10 million. Because the time youngsters today reach the age of 50, 10 million would be nothing. So make those sacrifices now. Take your money, use it wisely, invest wisely. Make the sacrifices to save. Make the sacrifices to educate yourself. Make the sacrifices of putting time into your business. Because partying is nice. A wink of an eye, it's gone. My advice to you is, if you are hungry, if you are hungry for success, you need to eat it, you need to sleep it, you need to dream it, you need to walk your walk and talk your talk up front. Don't be scared as a youngster or as an adult, don't be scared to take on the world. The world is yours to offer. If you don't want to fetch it or take it, somebody else is going to do it. But don't look back in 10, 20 years time and say, I now become envious of my, my peers, my friends, my family, because they have put the time in. My best advice to you is, use your time in your youth productively. My name is Keith Michael, and you're watching the Entrepreneurial Series, brought to you by Benita.